Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting this old envelope with wildflowers. Valentine's Day is coming and I thought I'd paint something that you can turn into a Valentine's Day card. There's a lot of colors here but it's quite simple to paint so let's begin. I started out by sketching out the envelope. I first figured out the size that I want for the composition and then I draw an open rectangle slightly under the midsection of the page so I have space to paint the flowers on top. The top will be hidden by the flowers which is why I'm only drawing the bottom portion without the open flap and once I'm done with the basic shape of the envelope, I just erased the straight lines and made it a bit rigid so the paper looks old and worn out. And that's pretty much it for the drawing. Next here are the colors that I'm going to use. There are a lot of colors here but you don't have to use the exact colors, just similar hues would do the trick. So this first one is French Ultramarine by Daniel Smith, Viridian Hue by Holbein, Hansa Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Jean Brillet No. 2 by Holbein, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Cobalt Violet Light by Holbein Rose of Ultramarine by Daniel Smith Gold Brown by Schmincke Burnt Umber by Holbein And for the envelope, we're going to be using Yellow Ochre by Holbein Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith And Sepia by Holbein so let's begin by painting the first flower. I'm going to start with a yellow. I use the Hansi Yellow Medium and I'm going to paint the main flowers which are the yellow flowers. I'm going to paint each individual petal that is going radially around a circle which is going to be the center of the flower and I'm going to paint three of these. I also left out the center empty for now because we're going to continue that with a different color. For all the flowers, since I'm going to paint them fairly small, I'm going to use a light to medium brush load for the whole painting to avoid big puddles. Once I finish painting all three, I want the petals to mostly be dry by now and I'm going to paint more petals in between the ones that I've already painted using a medium consistency this time. For the third flower, you can see that the first layer is still a bit damp, so the paint for the second layer bled out a little bit, but I don't mind a little bit of mess because I find that this loosens the painting. However, if you want a cleaner look, just make sure that the first layer is completely dry before you add on the petals. Next, I used a touch of Quinn Red to add to the Hansi Yellow for the inner portion of those petals. Then I'm going to continue to paint the center using Gold Brown. And once the paint has settled but is still a little bit damp, I'm going to add a thick consistency of Burnt Umber just to dot the center. Moving on to the next flower, I'm going to create a pink from Jean Brilliant with a little bit of Quinn Red. And for this one, I'm going to use a light load on my brush again. And I'm going to create sort of like a half circle, but I try to make sure that all the brush strokes are nice and thin and pointing outwards. So this creates sort of like a half pom pom texture. I'm just painting a few of these to fill in the space for the left side of the envelope and once I have a few, I added a little bit of Rose of Ultramarine to the pink mixture and just dot this at the bottom of each of the half pom-poms while the surface is still slightly damp so this darker pink will mingle and travel across to the lighter pink. Next, I'm going to show you how I mix my green. I use a mixture of Hansi Yellow, Viridian, and Burnt Umber for this. You can control the ratio depending on the tone of green that you want. For this, I want it to be a muted yellow-green, and I'm going to use this mixture to paint the sepals underneath the flowers that I just painted. Moving on to the next flower, I'm going to begin by using Cobalt Violet Light in 
quite a light consistency with again a light load on my brush. For this I'm using the tip of my brush to create very small brush strokes while playing with the angles and I like to also add small five petaled flowers at the bottom of these flowers. The top should be thinner and a bit more sparse and I want the bottom to be a bit more dense with more open flowers. Once I'm done with the light purple, I followed this up using a yellow green from the same mix but with less burnt umber and I used the green to paint in between the flowers to connect them together and also add tiny branches to suggest budding flowers. I'm going to make three of these and then I'm going to change the color using the same pink mixture as before in a light consistency to create more of the same type of flower in a different color this time. For this one, I used a mix of Quin Red with a higher ratio of Jean Brilliant this time to paint the same flower. And after I'm done, I'm going to add the same yellow green for the stem and the tiny buds. I'm going to leave them to dry for now and I'm going to go back to the yellow flowers by adding a thicker consistency of burnt umber for the center. For the yellow flower in the middle, I found that the gold brown didn't mix well enough with the yellow so I just cleaned it up using a clean damp brush to soften the transition. For the next flower, I used a mixture of French ultramarine with cobalt violet light and I'm going to paint a big ball of flower. I was thinking of hydrangeas because I love them but I don't think that they're that tiny so it can be whatever blue ball of flowers for this one. I just randomly angled my brush while using a very thin consistency of the mix and adding water in between so there's a slight differentiation in the blue tone and I also made sure that I left out a little bit of white space in between the strokes so it doesn't just look like a silhouette of a circle instead. Once the paint settled, I added a light consistency of a green mix and I just dotted around randomly with the blue as well. And I'm only going to do this for the first ball but for the second one, I'm just going to dot using a thicker consistency of the blue mix instead just for a slight variation in color. Here I felt like I needed to heighten the composition on the left so I used cobalt violet light to paint the pom pom flowers again and I'm going to follow this up using the same green mix for the sepals just like the pink flowers. There's quite a large space for the bottom left and the bottom right so I'm going to fill it in by adding two large leaves. I used the same green mix for the whole painting. I just use the same green mixture using those three colors so if you see a slight variation in tone it's just from different ratios that I mix and slightly different consistencies. All the colors look pretty light here so I'm going to add a darker tone. Here I used Rose of Ultramarine by itself and using the tip of my brush to paint dots in different angles but I'm going to face them downward so it's cascading over the envelope. I'm just going to add the stem very lightly here because I wasn't too sure about the placement yet but I'll go over it again after I get a better visualization of the composition. After painting the purple flowers, I decided to scatter more of them around. I just change up the shape slightly. I'm going to add a few at the bottom here and also at the top near the hydrangeas. Here I'm just going to layer on the larger leaves. I layered using a brighter green with less brown so both of them looks a bit more lively and then I used more of a muted green to paint the midrib and the veins. Next, I switched to my liner brush and using a very thick consistency of a muted green, I'm just connecting those pom-pom flowers to a really thin stem and adding more flowers where necessary to fill in empty spaces.
Going back to the cascading purple flowers, I ended up using a really dark green here to just connect them together and then adding small brush strokes to depict tiny flower buds. For the dark green, I just used a mixture of viridian with the burnt umber without hands yellow, so it's much darker. For the leaves of the pom pom flowers, I added a touch of Hansi Yellow just to lighten the green slightly. Then I used a thick consistency to paint very thin leaves made out of thin lines in the middle and more going outwards on both sides. I only painted a little bit so I know what the edge of the envelope looks like, but for now I'm going to move on to paint the envelope. As for the base color, I used a mixture of buff titanium with a tiny bit of yellow ochre and I used a thin consistency to paint the whole envelope by adding color or just water along the way so the surface looks uneven and textured. Now I'm going to start adding bits of shadows. I used a bit more yellow ochre in the mixture and I'm just going to darken certain parts like around the envelope flaps and I also add lines to follow through the rigid lines that I drew out earlier around the edges to depict uneven crumpled textures. Once I'm done mapping out the textures, I added a little bit of sepia to the mix to darken and mute the brown and I just used this to accentuate those textures that I made earlier. Here I'm adding more of the dark brown under the flowers to separate the shapes and create a bit of shadow. I'm just going to add a bit more textures in some areas with the yellow ochre and this is completely up to you how much texture you want to include for your envelope. Here I used a medium consistency of the dark brown mix after the base color is fairly dry so the paint won't travel and it'll create cleaner edges so I can soften one side with a clean damp brush. I'm going to leave the envelope for now and go back to the flowers. I'm creating a thick consistency green to paint the leaves of the pom pom flowers again. And this time I'm thinking of filling the space, especially around the bottom, to make it look more dense compared to the top portion. I think we have the main flowers down already so I'm going to add the fillers just to balance out the composition now. Here I just used the same green as the leaves and I just painted a bunch of thin stems branching out in a thick consistency. Then I'm going to switch to my size 2 brush and just load it with clean water and pull the colors from the stem to create really light flower buds. After that, I'm going to use a dark green mix from a mix of Viridian with Burnt Umber and this time I also added a little bit of Rose of Ultramarine to darken the green further and I'm going to use this to fill in the white spaces at the bottom of the floral composition so it's nice and dense in comparison to the top. Using the same green, I'm also just going to add details to the large leaves by adding the midrib and the veins.
this area on the right is fairly empty so I'm just going to use the brown mix from buff titanium with yellow ochre and sepia to show a little bit of the top flap of the envelope which is slightly exposed here. I can see that the composition on the left is heavier than the right so I'm going to add more fillers on the right hand side. I'm going to add the same thin branches like before using the green but instead of creating the flower buds I'm just going to create tiny flowers by dotting the tip of my brush using a thin consistency of the same light yellow green. And around the composition I also added a couple of spiral vines or branches because I think it's fun and it also adds a bit more movement. At the bottom, I decided to add extra cascading leaves because I feel like it would soften the angle of the envelopes. And then to finish it off, I'm just going to add darker versions of the same colors I used for each of the flowers and just dot small areas with those colors to deepen the form. For this one, I just used a thin consistency of French ultramarine. For the purple flowers, I used a mixture of cobalt violet light with a little bit of rose of ultramarine and as for the pinks, I used quin red with Jean Brilliant just in a slightly thicker consistency and with more quin red in the mixture. For those tiny little filler flowers, I used the same green in a slightly thicker consistency. And then to finish the composition, I also added a bit more of the darker brown to correct the angle of the envelope that I've created and also to just deepen the color. You can write greetings or words on the envelope or under the painting if you're making a card. For me, since it's just on my sketchbook, I'm just going to write with love, which is so unoriginal as I found out that that's what I wrote for my Valentine's Day post last year too, so you can come up with something a bit better if you'd like. And that's pretty much it for this painting. I really like how this one turned out. Like usual, all the list of tools that I use for this painting as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!